Exactly. Quarter to nine. Good to have you with us here on the East African Morning. So, Sassel is driving the move towards green hydrogen as an alternative fuel. And considering the price of petrol at the moment and fuel, uh, it might not be the worst idea. It's just gone past the first checkpoint, it seems. The Energy and Chemical Group launching the first on-road hydrogen project. Uh, they're not doing it alone, though. It's Sassel, Toyota and Air Products South Africa. They're hoping to supply the transport sector with green hydrogen uh, in the not-too-distant future future. Let's find out the plans uh, about this. Uh, Sassel CEO uh, Fleetwood Krobler joining us uh, this morning, also the president uh, of Sassel. Fleetwood, good morning. Good to have you on ENCA. Uh, so give me a sense of, of timelines now. When would you like to see this done? And just so I understand, we're talking just the, the transport and logistics sector right now. Is that correct? Good morning. Good morning to you. Yes, that is correct. We have, um, we have really started our thinking in terms of uh, the fuel of the future and hydrogen is a vector that is uh, really promising long term not only from an energy density point of view but also from a sustainability point of view we know that uh, if hydrogen is converted into electric power through a fuel cell system that the only um, output out of that that remains is is basically water and uh, and that is that is really very very sustainable and it's also produced uh, from water by splitting water through electrolysis and using a renewable energy now when we look at the timelines this is an incubation it's a first step it is a catalytic type of launch to to get the ecosystem going because i think like any anyone it's a it's a concept that people talk about hydrogen mobility, but what is it actually? And I think mm -hmm. that's what we mustered here to get together with Toyota and Air Products to say, look, this is how a passenger car look that is driven by uh, hydrogen. This is how it's full. This is how it it moves, and and that people can actually see that firsthand. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the first baby step to to get that um, you know sort of uh, socialized. And from here on, it will take a number of next steps for making it a reality we need to get a regulatory environment that is conducive to get infrastructure also uh, built for hydrogen refueling and then we need to look at where is the most cost effective application for green hydrogen mobility yeah, yeah. and we believe that is in the long run it is heavy duty transport trains and the like that operates 24 7. Uh, and perhaps not passenger cars, but, but the proof of concept is important to start this thinking and really to get everyone's minds and hearts around that hydrogen is the fuel of the future. Yeah, it's, it's a good place as far as the POC is concerned. Uh, from a business perspective, I'm curious, uh, Fleetwood, so uh, this makes complete sense to me for Toyota because they're going to be selling hydrogen vehicles, air products, obviously that makes sense uh, why they would be involved. Uh, you are a, a fuel uh, organization it's where it's entirely your business why would you want to move away from your money maker on this so this is a part and parcel and central to our strategy we are on a path of decarbonization and our objective is to um, transform our operations to reduce our carbon footprint but in the long term because we have the technology that we call fisher trops in South Africa that we've been practicing over the last 70 years, that process is basically agnostic to the source of carbon and hydrogen. So whilst we currently get it from uh, fossil fuels like coal and gas, we in the future can use it in the same way the technology, but use sustainable sources of carbon like biomass or even CO2 from biogenic sources. But most importantly, we can use green hydrogen then from water electrolysis and renewable energy. And mm. those two components, the CO and the hydrogen, that is what we use to make our fuels and chemicals and all the other products. So, so whilst it is a reinvention of ourselves with hydrogen, today we use around two and a half million tons of gray hydrogen. So the, the demand is there for us to replace that with green hydrogen if we get a commensurate su um, you know, supply of uh, biogenic sources of CO2. So there is a match there, but part and parcel of the thinking is also that we are currently uh, supplying about 30% of the country's fuel and energy need in that sense. And we've got a retail footprint. We've got the ability to enhance that and transition also from fuel to electrical uh, loading stations to eventually hydrogen dispensing at these retail stations. But that, of course, I foresee is only 
around 8 to, to 12 years away. We are not looking at that in the immediate future. Yeah, let's talk about resource efficiency for a moment as well, because uh, oxygen and hydrogen, uh, one of the issues being raised by environmentalists, uh, very pertinent for us here in South Africa. For this, you need an awful amount of water. We are a water scarce country. In some parts of the country, we are in a drought. So how would this practically work in South Africa if you need this much water? So you have to bring it in also the, the context. Most of the, the well-endowed uh, natural wind and uh, solar sources are also close to coastal areas. And there is quite a, a big focus to also use desalination of seawater that can be used to produce the hydrogen. So I do think there are many aspects that we have to consider mm. in this process of uh, manufacturing or producing green hydrogen through renewables. So it is not only uh, water sources inland, but we can also use seawater. And that the cost that that adds to the production of hydrogen is less than 10% in terms of uh, desalinating seawater. So, so there are aspects like that that also have to bring brought into the uh, equation here. Yep. I'm also on the board of the uh, Hydrogen Council uh, based in Belgium, and that's a global uh, institution that was formed uh, with the objective to get together of all business and areas and countries in the world where we have got representation from Japan, China, South Africa, and most of the Western uh, countries and, and business leaders. And we have set ourselves also the goal there to homogenize the specifications, the safety standards, the, the way that hydrogen is transported, the classification of when hydrogen is green, when it is grey. So it's, it's all these framework sure issues which you're dealing with uh, as well, that. which sounds like you've got uh, those sort of plans in place. It's just fascinating to hear uh, about the uh, the water situation. I think a lot of people will understand better now, uh, Fleetwood, how this is actually going to be uh, handled. But I appreciate the time. I need to leave it there. Uh, Fleetwood Krobler, uh, CEO of Sassel and the president as well uh, for our show, ENCA Drive, by the way. I'd like to see one of these green hydrogen trucks, transport vehicles when they come out. That'll be fun. Uh, to drive. I appreciate uh, his time this morning. And definitely, as he was highlighting uh, the need for, for water, mm. uh, the need for, for, for solar energy, the need for desalinated water in order just to, to keep them going.